What is up guys, Noah here. Um, so today I'm pretty excited. I'm going to be doing a video going over um, my band's in-ear monitor rack system. I am sure that if you clicked on this video, you're kind of familiar with what these are. Um, you know, a lot of people on YouTube are making these now and kind of showing their rundown. And so I figured I'll hop on the bandwagon. Why not? Um, I'm pretty proud with what I've come up with on this in-ear monitor rack build. Um, it's been a little tedious and uh, this video is kind of going to go over um, my uh, 2.0 version of my in-ear monitor rack build. Um, and I actually had a company send me out a product that um, they wanted me to kind of talk about and try out in this uh, in this rack build. So quick disclaimer that I forgot to mention, the company that sent me this product did not pay me to make this review. They did send me the product on their dime, but everything I say in this video is my own personal thoughts and opinion on it. All right, now back to the video. Um, without further ado, here we go. So this is the Phoenix Pro PTM. 22. This guy here is actually a one rack uh, unit and it is a uh, mono wireless in your monitor um, transmitter system. You can have two individuals using this one rack system here up with up to two packs and have their own uh, their own custom mixes with this unit. Only thing is it isn't stereo so it is just going to be duplicated on each side. Um, but for what my band's been using, my other bandmates, um, they've been using the uh, Behringer power amp, um, little headphone amps. Um, they've been using those during our rehearsals, and so they're already mono. So it's not going to be a huge difference from what they're used to hearing, um, but they'll be able to be wireless. And since we're kind of a metal band, it's nice to have that freedom to kind of run around and go crazy on stage, you know? So um, yeah, I'm really excited to try this out as I do have um, the Sennheiser wireless in your monitor system. It's the G4. I've been using that in, in stereo, um, and I'm the vocalist of the band, so I'm a little spoiled. <laughs> All right, let's get this puppy open. So, got it open here. Sorry I don't have a top-down shot or anything. A um, little bit of limited on, limited on cameras and space in my studio here. But um, first, get your um, instruction booklet. A um, little bit of a warranty card here. Got some cables here. Um, some antenna uh, extenders, so that way you can have the antennas um, on a antenna distribution plate if you want it to be more um, in the back, if you have multiple antennas. Um, so that, that's handy. Um, looks like it comes with some earbuds, or as they call them, in-ears. I would not suggest using these, <laughs> uh, just because uh, I would probably use actual in-ears, but who knows? I'm not gonna diss on them. Somebody else can try them and say if they like them, but so those do come with it in case you know are needing uh, some in-ears. Double A batteries for the transmitters power for the rack itself and these are yep rack ears which are great for mounting it into a rack who would have thought so uh, yeah that's good let's see oh here's the transmitter okay transmitter um only thing is with the transmitter oh Oh, transmitter is completely plastic. I you heard that. Feels like it could easily break. Okay, get a nice click when you turn it on. It's always handy. A little bit of a display here. Let's see if there's a little, oh, yep. This is always satisfying me. Yeah, there you go. Peeling off that. A little screen protector is always satisfying. The, the actual door, when you open it, is completely plastic, even the hinge. So I could just I could just see that, like, after getting, you know, night after night, having new batteries put into it, just possibly wearing out or breaking. So that's something that um, you might want to be aware of if you plan on using this a lot. Um, I could see this being good for maybe like a house of worship where only it gets used on like Sundays, um, you know, not as often. 
So yeah, just something to keep in mind. Uh, we got the antennas, nothing crazy here. And then have the actual receiver. Okay, here it is, all of its glory. Got channel one, channel two right here. Nothing crazy. Sync your packs. In the back, you have your inputs for channel one, channel two, and they are just uh, TS connection jacks. They don't have XLR jacks, which is also kind of a downfall if, you know, you, have, you go to a venue and they're giving you an XLR drop um, for, your, uh, for your monitor mix. And you're like, well, I don't have an XLR. So you'd have to have an adapter. So you'd have to have like a TS to, or sorry, a TRS is what it would be. You'd have a TRS jack to, uh, you know, like a, I'm trying to think, I think it would be a, probably a female XLR. Um, adapter and then you could adapt it and it would work just fine. Um, so I mean it's not the end of the world but it's just a little other thing that you have to have so um, something to keep in mind there. Looks like there is a uh, 12 dp dB uh, pad switch on each channel in case you need to make the source a little quieter have that option and then there's also this is the interesting thing it also has outputs on it um, which I thought was really intriguing so it's like you can take your outputs um, back out of your mix and send it somewhere else if you needed to. So it's like, say you wanted to record your uh, um, your in-ear monitor mix on like a field recorder or something like that. Um, you could basically just, you know, take it out of these outputs, plug it in, and then um, you can record your in-ear mix and share it on social media or whatever you're wanting to do with it or um, anything along those lines. So that's kind of interesting. Um, not a ton of things have that loop out like that. Um, but yeah, it has that for each channel and then your antenna um, post, I guess, where you would connect your antennas. I don't know what they're called, sorry. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so you plug those in and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna basically be taking the um, in-ear monitor rack that I already have, putting it into a larger 12 unit rack um, that's actually wood because my other one is one of the molded plastic uh, gator cases, which has been great. Um, but if we're going to be kind of gigging out every now and then a little bit more, I don't want to just risk breaking it because we got quite a bit of expensive equipment in that, uh, in that rack. But yeah, so we're going to be moving everything over from that gator case into the new, uh, wood case. Um, so I'll kind of let you guys check that out and follow along with my journey. And then I'll go over kind of the, uh, signal flow, what we all got in that rack, and then kind of give my thoughts on what I thought of the PTM 22 and kind of how it compares to the G4 from the from Sennheiser. So yeah, without further ado, let's go. All right, so we are in basement now, the nasty, creepy, unfinished basement. Um, but this is where my band has our uh, rehearsals and stuff down here. Um, so this is where I keep the in-ear monitor rack. It's pretty big, so I didn't want to have to build it upstairs and then carry it all the way downstairs when it's really heavy. Um, so yeah, so over here is the current in-ear monitor rack. As I mentioned, it's in that Gator uh, kind of molded plastic case. So we are going to be transitioning it over into this new um, ATA style like wood case. This is actually from Sesamic Audio. I think that's how you pronounce their name. Um, they're a pretty uh, low budget, cost effective um, company. Um, so I wanted to try this out because it wasn't super expensive. So um, it's really interesting. It actually kind of wobbles a little bit, which is a little concerning. Um, granted, it is empty, so I could maybe see that being why it kind of has a little bit of that, you know, give a little. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that whenever I load it up with the equipment, it's super solid. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, I will kind of talk through what we got over here in the... Uh, in the current in your monitor rack. So we have the Furman MDX uh, power conditioner, um, just so that everything can be powered from kind of one source and it's protected if there's a surge or anything like that. And then I have my uh, Sennheiser um, G4 in your monitor wireless uh, receiver. And then next to that, I have the Sennheiser um, EW. Uh, digital wireless uh, handheld microphone um, receiver. Um, they're both a half space, so I'm able to basically put both of them on a combiner plate, which allows me to put them in one single rack space, uh, which is nice. 
Below that, I have the Personas Quantum um, 2626. Um, it's an audio interface, so I, we use that to run tracks, basically. And then below the Personas audio interface, we have a brush panel, which basically allows you to run cables from the back of the rack to the front in a nice, clean way. Um, I saw this on another guy's channel, and I was like, wow, that's a really, really awesome simple, effective way to get cables from the back of the rack to the front. Um, <clears throat> and it was super cheap. I got it off of Amazon. I think it was like maybe 28 bucks or something like that. Not expensive at all. I can link that in the description. Um, and then below that, we have the Personas Studio Live 16R, which this is kind of the brain of the entire system. It is the mixer um, where basically everybody in the band can connect to it with their, uh, with their smartphones and they can control their in-ear monitor mix uh, from the app, um, which is super nice because we can all dial in our ears. And usually we don't have to mess with it once our ears are set um, because things are pretty close to being the same um, from time to time, uh, from each time we uh, come to the rehearse. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the main brain of the system. And I recently just switched to that. I was using the uh, Behringer XR18. Um, and I liked that. The only downfall with it is that it was three um, rack unit spaces, which took up a ton of real estate. Um, and this one is actually only one. Uh, it's only one unit. So that's super nice. The only downfall that we're running into is um, <clears throat> it only has six aux outputs, which there's four of us in the band. And I'm wanting us to eventually all have stereo mixes um, for our in ears. So um, unfortunately, that's not working with that setup. So I was possibly looking into maybe upgrading to the 24R as we will have uh, one more space um, available in this rack here. So that would allow us to upgrade to that because it's two rack units. Um, but anyways, as for now, it's working great. And then below that, <clears throat> I have the Art S8 three-way splitter. I have two of them actually here. And basically it's eight inputs and it splits them both three different ways, which is super helpful. Um, you have a direct out on the front and then the back, you have two uh, isolated splits for each channel. So you could send one channel into three different locations, which is incredible. Basically, what's that, what that is doing is it's uh, splitting it and going into a patch bay in the back, um, which then uh, the front of house plugs into for their inputs. And then the other split is going into our mixer for the band's ears. Um, pretty standard setup for a lot of these in-ear monitor uh, builds. Below that, we have an ART 16-channel XLR patch bay, which basically just allows me to easily patch um, inputs from the back to the front. Um, I only got that because I was unaware of these brush panels. I probably could have had a brush panel there as well to just easily take some of these inputs and take them to the front. Um, but I already had it, so that's what I'm using it for at the moment. It's doing its job great. And then below that is just a simple two unit rack drawer just for storage. We can put our um, in your monitor packs in there, some batteries. I put my microphone in there, you know, all of the essentials that you need with this sort of rig. And then one last thing that I forgot to mention, I do have a Wi-Fi router up here. And basically that just allows me to um, extend the mixer's um, Wi-Fi. So that way the band can easily have a solid connection whenever they connect to it. Um, and adjust their in-ear mixes. So that's what the Wi-Fi router is for. Okay, so that was kind of the rundown of the uh, current rig we have. We're gonna just be moving all of that over into this 12 unit rack here. Um, so yeah, that's what we'll be doing. Um, basically, it gets pretty hairy with all the connections and stuff. Um, so I actually made a diagram that I can attach in the um, description down here. I did that ahead of time before I built this just so I could keep my mine straight and know where all the cables went because it's pretty intense. If I turn around the back of this, um, you would see there's a lot of cables and connections going on. So going into it with a plan is a great thing to do. Um, it's going to just make it a lot easier for you whenever you start actually plugging in everything. Um, so yeah, basically I'm going to be moving everything to this. I'm going to kind of switch the order a little bit because this got a little messy and a little difficult. So I'm going to try and mess around a little bit with, uh, Kind of the order of some of the things on it and this one and so with that we'll be adding the phoenix pro ptm 22 into this system which will give my uh, guitarist and bassist 
um, wireless freedom. Um, so yeah, we'll get going on that and uh, we'll be back as soon as that is done. Okay, sorry for the not so good quality. Switching over to my phone cam here. Um, so this is what we're doing. So <clears throat> basically here's a little tip. When putting a bunch of equipment into a rack, it's easier if you lay the rack down um, because then you don't have to worry about gravity. So you can just set in all of your rack units and then screw them in, move them around real easy. I had to put the lid back on to the back of this rack because it does have this wood lip here for the lid, uh, which is handy when you're taking off and putting on the lid, but uh, it wouldn't lay flat. So I put the back lid on so that way it would lay down flat and flush. But yeah, so we're gonna start with uh, transitioning over, but just thought I would share this tip with all you guys. Okay, so I got everything moved over from the previous rack into the new rack. Um, like I said, I'm trying a different order. Um, so we have the Furman. Um, I have a single space as well right now. Um, I specifically put the single space right here because the Furman um, is pretty, it's pretty deep. And so um, when you start to actually plug things into the Furman and it's at the top, it sometimes can block um, the the jacks on the wireless units here. Um, so having that space gives me a little bit of a buffer room for now. I might put a, uh, like a ventilation plate right here um, just to cover up the hole so it looks a little bit more clean. And since it's a ventilation plate, it will um, allow for some more airflow to come in there. Um, but yeah, so we got the Furman. Um, we got my wireless mic, uh, my, my wireless G4 in-ear system. And then we have the new Phoenix Pro PTM22 system right here for my guitar player and bass player. Um, we've got the Quantum 2626 interface from Personas. Um, and then we have the patch bay right here now, um, which is mostly for patching um, my tracks from the Quantum uh, in, the, in the back, back into the front of the splitter up here. So that way they can go to our in-ears down here into the uh, 16R in the front of house. Um, so yeah, we got the, the patch bay and we got the S8 three-way splitters right here. Um, we got that brush panel here, um, which is what we'll run our uh, cables from to the uh, 16R, which is basically just the splits from the three-ways back into our mixer here, um, which you wouldn't need this um, if your mixer had the jacks in the back, but since the 16R has most of its jacks in the front, that's what this panel is for um, because everything plugs into the front, which is kind of inconvenient, but hey, it is what it is. It's only one space, so, um, you know, we'll make do. Um, and then, yeah, and then I got the two unit rack drawer on the bottom. So, yeah, let's flip it over and get to the, the fun part, and that is the wiring. Yay! Here comes another hour. <laughs> All right, so we got everything in here. Um, one thing that we're gonna want is we're gonna want our light. So, this is something that I try and install in ev the back of every rack. And that is a uh, little LED light, under cabinet light. Um, I usually get this specific one from Lowe's every time. It's about 20 bucks, but it's very bright and it's got a decent length of the cable. Just plug it in into the firm in there and I usually dual lock it to the top and never moves. Um, only thing is the dual lock I have here is getting kind of old. I've pulled it from two racks now, so I don't know how, how well the adhesive is gonna hold up. That feels pretty solid. And I highly suggest dual lock because dual lock is just, stuff's incredible. It's super powerful um, and it's gonna hold. Velcro on the other hand, probably wouldn't trust that as well. So I'm definitely gonna suggest dual lock. So for now, we're just gonna kind of fold and tuck the cable. We'll cable manage all that later. But yeah, so now I'm gonna power this puppy up with the Furman, that way we can work with our light on. So. All right, 
there we go. So now we got power going to the rack so we can actually see what in the world we're doing. Okay, so this is why I kind of rearranged the order of things. You can see that the drawer is the longest thing in the rack here. And then right next to that is the 16R. It's very deep. So I wanted to have enough space whenever I run cables. So let's start with basically our splits, which are these guys right here. And those are gonna go into the 16R. I highly suggest if you can find something to sit on that you do it here, otherwise your legs, your back are going to hate you. So, got these snakes from Amazon actually, and they're only four channel snakes. They're basically what I was trying to find is I was trying to find the shortest um, snakes that I could find because what I was running into is I, uh, when I was buying from major dealers like Sweetwater, which I love them, they only had snakes that were five feet long. That was the shortest I could find and they were rather expensive. Um, so these ones, I believe our, are around two feet or two and a half feet. They were the shortest ones I could find and they were relatively affordable as well, but they only came in four channel snakes. So basically I bought, um, I bought four of them. So here's an eight channel snake and then I zip tied them together. So this is eight channels and this is eight channels. So basically each one of these S8s is eight channels. So this covers one S8. Um, so yeah, that was what I did and it worked out really well. Um, but now we're gonna basically start wiring it up and they're color coded. So you just have to kind of figure out um, the order that you want to remember um, the color code. So basically I have white as my number one channel yellow as my number two channel, blue is my number three channel, and red as my number four channel. The reason why I did that is blue and red usually stands for left and left and right, and right is usually always red. That's how you remember that. So I figured these two will go together, and then these two I can choose whatever order I want. So I just made white number one and yellow number two. So that just made it easier for me. You can do it however you want. All right, so we're gonna start wiring these up here. Okay, and as you can see, the 16R only has 12 up front. So we got our four, eight, 12. We got those wired up. So now we have to wire the other half of the back. And I believe, um, according to my diagram, the next uh, half of these are all uh, tracks. So instead of using these four um, of the snake, it's just gonna go uh, directly from there to there. So I won't actually be using um, the last four of the uh, of the S8 with this snake here. So I'm just going to tuck it over here um, because in case I ever do need it, now it's wired up. Next, what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to actually wire up all the power for all the devices in here, and then I'll continue on doing audio cables and things like that. So without further ado, here we go. Okay, so as you can see, I'm trying to cable manage um, these power cables a little bit by zip tying them um, so that they're not so long and bulky. As you can see, they're still hanging quite a bit in the way. So what I'll do is I'll take these cable um, zip tie uh, management um, little blocks. They're like adhesive blocks and I'll stick them on the side and then I can zip tie the cables kind of along the side here to just get the cables out of the way so you can actually see what's going on. So I'll do that later. Um, right now I'm just kind of zip tying them so they're not so long, but uh, it will get clean and you do want to have it clean in case you ever have to, uh, you know, go in to figure out if something's wrong or change the routing of anything. You want to make sure that it's clean so that way uh, you can easily get to it. All right, so all the power cables are run now. Um, so we'll get on to doing all of the patch cables. And I will mention this is whenever the diagram is going to come in handy um, because this is when things can get a little hairy um, with where everything is supposed to go. Um, so the diagram that I made beforehand is going to be super helpful with me knowing what needs to go where. All 
All right, so the in-ear monitor uh, patches are in. So basically we have a stereo being sent to my receiver right here. And then we have the two mono signals for my guitar player and bass player going to the uh, Phoenix Pro PTM22. So we got that one right there, that one right there. And then I have a stereo signal being sent to the patch bay right here um, on channel or on ch uh, yeah channel seven and eight of, on the patch bay, and that's basically for my drummer. Um, he has a Behringer um, P1 headphone amp that is stereo um, and that sits by him. So basically, we can just run some um, some XLRs to channel seven and eight on the other side of the rack there to to plug his headphone amp in. Um, so we got those, and now we're going to get uh, the patches made for our tracks. Okay, so as I'm sure you guys are noticing, it's starting to look like a spaghetti monster, which, again, I'm going to try my best to cable manage. Um, but basically, I've been taking inputs from the back, bringing them in the front into the splitter, according to my uh, diagram. But now, what I have to do is I have to take some of these inputs that I've brought here and route them into the splitter. Okay, so not everything is routed. We need to get our tails. And this is something that I just noticed that I'm gonna probably run into an issue. So I did have um, this uh, patch bay in the back that I wanted to have back here so that the front of house guy could plug into this um, to basically get all of his inputs. Um, and I could have it labeled accordingly but there is a very small gap between the rack drawer and the, uh, the jacks here. So I don't know how well that's going to work. Um, so yeah, a little worried about that. Unless I just lift it up, but I don't want it to be too, I don't want it to be too high here. I mean, I guess that's not like the end of the world. Maybe like around there. I just want to make sure that it's easy enough to see the jacks. So anyways, I'm going to get my tails run for our outputs now. So this will be one through eight. Okay, so I'm back, it's a different day. Um, I basically got all the wiring done. Only problem is it is a rat's nest. Um, all the wiring, I guess, isn't quite done yet. I have a antenna rat, uh, like combiner, not combiner, but an antenna like kind of extender that I put back here so that my antennas are all on top of the rack um, and out in the open and not buried back in there. Um, so I do have to wire that up yet, but it kind of gets in the way once I you know, I'm working back here, so I don't want that in the way at the moment. So I'm gonna work a little bit more on getting everything cable managed. So yeah, here we go.
All right, so there you have it, guys. Um, the new in-ear monitor rack 2.0 in the new uh, rack here with the uh, Phoenix Pro PTM22, which we are going to try in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, so it all went together pretty well. I'm pretty happy with how it looks. It seems a lot more solid than the previous uh, unit and not having that wobble issue that I mentioned earlier, although the top still does seem a little, little fragile, so I would be a little scared to like maybe jump on this or sit on it or maybe toss something too big on it. Um, so yeah, just a heads up on the Seismic Audio or Sesamic Audio, however you pronounce their name, um, road case. So not 100% sure on that, but it was pretty cheap and affordable and it's holding everything in well. There's quite a bit of room on the side here, um, which is gonna be good for airflow um, for some of the hardware in here. So that's also encouraging. And then as I mentioned, I am I think gonna get a uh, ventilation panel here. Um, just for the time being, since I don't have a unit there, just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And then on the back, uh, my antenna um, extender that I have, where I have all the antennas plugged into, um, basically I'm taking all of my wireless units, running the antennas to this uh, unit in the back here, so that way they're not um, you know, on the front here or inside of the road case, they're out in the back. Um, I need one more uh, antenna port uh, for the other side of the Phoenix Pro uh, unit here. So I'm just gonna get um, a plate that has more antenna posts on it. Um, Phoenix Pro, I believe, actually sells one that has, I think, around six or eight posts on it. So I'm probably gonna pick one of those up from them. I think it was only around $20. So I'll pick that up, get that on there, and then I'll be able to have all my antennas nicely and cleanly on the back. Um, but beyond that, I think that's pretty much everything with this build. Um, yeah, I'm super stoked to try it out um, and see how it all see how it all works. Hopefully all the wiring's good. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys following along with me on this. And uh, without further ado, let's try this PTM22. Okay, so um, I got everything sorted out and hooked up with the audio rack. Um, I got my tracks and everything. I got my in-ears in. I'm giving a signal through the loop out on the PTM22 to my audio recorder. Um, <clears throat> so you guys will be able to hear what I'm hearing. Obviously you guys won't hear uh, any of like the interference if I do have any uh, from the wireless system because you guys are direct. Um, but yeah, so I've been testing it a little bit. Um, so far it's sounding pretty decent. There's a couple things that I'm running into that I want you guys to hear. Um, we can talk about it a little bit more after we're done in the studio. Um, but yeah, without further ado, here we go. <clears throat> um, this is one of my band's unreleased tracks. Um, this is the multi-tracks that we use for when we rehearse. Uh, it is metal, so if you don't like metal, I apologize. I'll be doing some screaming because I am the metal vocalist in the band, but this is kind of what we hear in our ears whenever we're performing. Intro. Best you be to live your life as a shallow thing, thinking only for yourself, not a single thought for anyone. Yeah, not a single thought for anyone else. Will you ever realize that all these lies are on you, but you're not all to blame? No one ever showed you the truth. Your foundation was I.O. But when will you realize that you have your own? We'll call that good. All right, guys. So we are back in the studio. And um, yeah, I really, really am happy with how the in-ear monitor rack turned out. Um, I'm excited to see what my bandmates think of the uh, Phoenix Pro PTM22 system. Um, I tried it out. And as you guys just heard, um, it sounds pretty good overall. Um, the only thing that I noticed, and I'm curious to know if you guys noticed it as well, um, was that 
some of the frequencies were sounding out of phase. And that's mostly just because some of the tracks we're running are in stereo, specifically the guitars. We had a left guitar and a right guitar. Um, and they're panned that way so that when they go to the front of house, um, you know, they sound correct according to the stage layout um, and they fill the sound properly. Um, and since the PTM-22 is in mono, um, we're basically hearing a weird phasing issue because we're, our stereo signals that are left and right are being summed down the middle and it sounds a little funny. Um, I mean, it's not the end of the world, um, especially, you know, if you're not used to running stereo or you're not using stereo tracks. Uh, it's not going to be a huge issue, um, especially since the audience aren't going to hear that. It's just in our ears. Um, so, I mean, you know, it just depends how picky you are. I personally prefer to have that stereo full sound. Um, so I wouldn't like that. But my bandmates, on the other hand, they might not care. Um, I could see my guitar player maybe not being super stoked about that since he's trying to hear the ghost track guitar um, and then his guitar um, properly. I could see that being a bit of a, an annoyance and an issue for him. Um, so I'm curious to see what he'll think of it. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, um, rig rundown slash review. So if you don't mind, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and turn that bell notification on. That way you don't miss any of the things that I'll be posting here in the future. And I hope that you guys again enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next one. See ya. Gosh, this chair is so darn squeaky. I think I need a better stool for, for the next video. <laughs> Brought to you by Ghost Energy Drinks. Please sponsor me. I just realized it is almost four o'clock and I have only had a honey bun today on top of a Ghost Energy Drink. What is wrong with me? In case you were all wondering where my lav mic is, it is all the way down here. This is the best part, you get to wax yourself. Ouch, I actually have some hairs. Yowza, what we do to hide microphones.